This is Drom Shekasuto. Shalom Aleichem, guys, how are you doing? Baruch Hashem, the, the most wonderful thing that we can do is really to try to open up, to open ourselves, and then, and really to try to to express the the deep thoughts that that we have. Yesterday I spoke with a with a student of mine, with a friend, and told him I think that in times that you like being asked for something, if someone asks you a certain question or you need to deal with a certain reality in your life or something like that so it's better to try to focus first of all in your inner thoughts to try to feel where you holding and in that in that uh, in that area on that topic and then to respond and now the real secret of of that is that when we are always like acting fast and, and reacting fast to to our life, to reality, thoughts and 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 and, and challenges. So we are working based on a certain program that is already been shaped by our life experience means certain patterns and, and certain way of reaction that are not necessarily connected to the reality that we're facing in the right moment. If you, for an example, been hurt in, in uh, like job interviews or whatever, and you're not so sure that you are able to succeed or to make it happen, and now you're facing another meeting like that, another interview, so Many times you will start to defend yourself, to protect yourself, and it will be based on your life experience, on failures from the past, on certain patterns that that um, been set for you in your mind automatically, when you might even destroy yourself and ruin for yourself something so good that can take place in your life if you will be connected to reality and not... <clears throat> and not going to work from your fears, out of your fears, and from uh, negativity. Um, now the thing is that it's much, much deeper than just trying to give yourself another chance to succeed or something like that, because really it goes much, much deeper to such inner uh, layers and such depths of, of, of your spirit, of your soul, that by reconnecting yourself to what you feel, to your senses, to your deep um, level of inner awareness, really to your inner voice, so when you do that, you are relating yourself to the Creator in a higher way, in a deeper way, and much more um, meaningful. The thing is that our self-esteem is so broken, and we are we are so like don't don't believe in ourselves and don't give ourselves the the credit for our for our success and by that we're pushing ourselves to such horrible places of sadness and, and depression and despair when we're completely ignoring our true potential and things that we can succeed with and really we are able to bring down to the world such wonders and such amazing miracles if we're really going to focus on on our potential, on our spirit, on our positive um, energy 
that gives us life, that gives us hope. And every day, every morning you wake up and like, there is something inside of you that that gives you the energy to, to go even just to eat, just to go to work, just to go to another meeting, just to set up another thing to do today, to make sure that your life will be better or at least not to be worse. Where is it coming from? It's coming from an inner will for life, from an energetic source of, of life that is like a spring that is coming from within and, and filling you and and we must let this positive energy inside of us to take over and to control us and to lead us and to take us to to where we really belong now there is something very interesting we know that there is a concept that is called Yeridat Hadorot. Um, it's, it's explaining that the generations are going lower and lower, means falling. Means that the ancestors, the righteous ones of three and two thousand years ago, they were higher level than us. They had like deeper awareness and, and spiritual connection to the Creator. Now, way, where this assumption uh, coming from, based on what? It's based on the fact that the souls were much wider and larger, and it's like branches that are coming out of the tree, and every generation is another stage of those branches that are getting thinner and thinner, still coming out of the first ones but are are holding less now the thing is that it's true that our ancestors and the righteous ones that lived three thousand years ago or two thousand years ago or even eight hundred years ago they were closer to to the source of souls means to adam and eve's souls and it's true that on that aspect from that side really they were carrying a certain greatness that we are not exposed to but in the same time there is something very unique in our souls that is rising us to a place that those righteous ones the ancient ones were not able to enjoy um, from and what's that it's that aspect that really even though that the righteous ones the ancient ones from earlier generations were closer to the large soul of adam and eve and they were wider and larger souls than ours still they were also closer to adam and eve in that aspect of their their mistakes they were not as close as us to the completion and to and to the fixing of the first sin of adam and eve even though that the righteous ones were enjoying the illumination of adam and eve in earlier generations they were also suffering more than us from the mistakes that brought Adam and Eve uh, to fail in their test and to sin. And I explained it once for an example, and it's a very deep um, concept and issue that we know that Eve, she sinned while eating from the fruit from the tree of knowledge and then also feeding letting her husband eat with her. Now I ask that question, why in the world Eve is walking alone in the garden? If we saw that she and Adam were good friends and everything was good between them, so why did she find herself walking alone in the garden? So I explained that that was the reason, the root 
for the separation between them, for the sin to take place. Because if they were together, so they were two against the evil inclination, and they would find the power to argue with him and to win. But because that she was there alone, separated from her husband, so she couldn't enjoy his force and power. And therefore she failed because she was on her own, she was alone. Maybe even if the snake would meet Adam, maybe Adam would fail as well. We don't know. We never, we never, we haven't been there in that place. He never been tested. The snake attempted Eve first. But this act of separation that took place between Adam and Eve brought them to that failure. Now, we know that separation between couples and not talking only about divorce or fights or arguments even in houses that things seems to be okay and like people are acting friendly many times there are mm, horrible uh, dividings and disagreements and arguments and separations between the souls between between the couple between the male and the female between the man and his wife now, I think that even though the righteous ones in earlier generations were ho holier than us, were much closer to the light than us, they were also blocked in their eyes, like not able to see and to recognize the mistakes because they were closer to them than us. Means that in every generation, the righteous people are fixing something, people around the world are fixing something. So the next generation is coming out to the world, leaning and counting and enjoying the, 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 the prophets and the sweetness of the, of the fruits that the earlier generations seed and planted and was growing for, for them. Now, because of that development and because of that amazing thing that is taking place in every generation that real honest and pure and righteous people are working hard to improve and to fix themselves therefore many things are being clarified and being sifted and being fixed so now even though that we are in this last generation we are kind of weak and not as strong as we wish to be certain things in our mind are working very very right because we came out to this world after thousands of years of developments after thousands of years of efforts from side of of righteous people that opened many many ways and expanded many many lanes for us to walk in therefore today even though that we're not enjoying um, the same illumination like the earlier generations were enjoying from, we are facing less darkness and less inner darkness. Now, I know that to many of you, those words that I'm saying can be sound a little bit weird because in life, Practically, we feel a lot of darkness and we feel um, confused. But the real truth is that all this darkness that we feel is not coming really because of the, the thickness of darkness and, 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 and because that the challenges are so hard just because of lack of, of certain illumination, certain weakness that we're carrying with ourselves and giving up so fast on, on the tests and giving up on, on our success, letting the sadness and the low self-esteem to destroy us completely. Let every silly person with a negative opinion to shake our happiness and uh, and our goal in life when in reality we're so close to this redemption when in reality we're so close to our salvation 
and it's in our power and it's in our hands to bring that redemption. Think about the greatest righteous ones that lived 200 years ago, 250 years ago, the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh. So he was an amazing person. He was like super righteous. He was so amazing and so pure. His students and his family admired him. Everyone that would speak with him was fascinated from his wisdom and his sensitivity and whatever. He was great. But if he would want to give a class now, so he would, let's say, stand in a certain village in uh, Poland or in Ukraine, in Poland or in Ukraine, and he's okay, he's over there now, and he wants to speak, so who he will speak with? He will find 14 people in the synagogue. If he will come in Shabbat, so he will find 47 people in the synagogue. That was his crowd. All of his classes were to this amount of people. They didn't have um, phones, they didn't have cell phones, they didn't have computer, they didn't have internet, they didn't have television, they didn't have Instagram, they didn't have Facebook, they didn't have YouTube. They didn't have all the social media outlets that we're using today that in one lecture you can meet thousands of people. I remember once I gave a class in, in Monsi and I came to that class and there was one student waiting for me over there. And it was a challenge for me to, to open my mouth and to start talking in front of one person. It was kind of a challenge for me. I did it. I was okay with it. But during the class, I, you know, those thoughts are crossing your mind. Ask myself, like, what are you doing? Like, you're sitting in front of, you're standing in front of one person and like you're talking for an hour and that's what I did and I gave a whole class and when I finished the class I turned off the, the phone from from making this uh, Facebook live and uh, streaming the class on Facebook live and I checked and I saw that there were more than 1000 views live on that video so Actually, I was standing in front of 1,000 people and I wasn't even able to recognize it. I couldn't see it because they were on the other side of the screen, in the other side of this uh, iPhone. But so you can see that like in reality, you look and you check and it seems to you like, all right, I was talking to one person when really there were 1,000 people over there and we're going through those feelings uh, many times our self-esteem is being challenged all the time in those tests. For an example, you pray, and you go and you pray Mincha, you are standing Shmon or you just said Kiyat or that you said a blessing on food, or whatever you did, you were nice, you were sitting, you learned Torah, you spent time with your children, with your wife, all those amazing things that you do with life, in life, but you don't see the results. You don't see, oh, a great illumination. You don't see how it affected your child that he will be much happier in 20 years from now. You can't see those results. You don't see the light that is coming out of your actions. And therefore, you're giving up. You're saying, ah, I'm just wasting my time. Now I'm learning, but it's not useful. It doesn't help me. It doesn't build anything. It's not this, not that. And by that, by not going with high self-esteem, but being so far from self, uh, belief in yourself, you start falling to despair and you give up on the things that you are able to achieve and that you achieve easily and that they are very powerful. Now again, like we said before, the tests are not as hard as we think that they are just that we are coming with very low motivation with very low self-esteem we're coming to those challenges very lazy and very low and always criticizing ourselves and and expecting failures or whatever nonsense is crossing our mind when really in reality we are able to achieve much much more if we will climb above our negativity and our sadness and our uh, laziness and uh, and uh, depression and um, 
I know from my life experience that I spent thousands of hours in Yidvodadut and I went to talk to Hashem on every issue and on every topic that was important to our to our life, to my family and to mine. And I saw so many wonders, so many miracles, like just by taking yourself out of the house and, and just go and pray for an hour, for 30 minutes, for two hours. And just talking to the Creator, like you talk to your best friend, just like asking, please Hashem, I need your help, help us to pay rent, help us to buy a house, help us never to argue anymore, help us not, not, to, not, to, not to be hard on our children, not to hit them, not to scream, not to curse, help like every, every issue that you have, you need to, to face it and you need to work on it and the way to do it is is just literally to, to work on yourself, to go and take your issues, topics that are bothering you, and just to express them and to ask for your salvation from the Creator. And when the right time will come, all your prayers will be like a, a flower's bouquet. Like suddenly you're going to find them being answered and suddenly you're going to recognize the glory of, uh, of your your efforts, you're going to recognize the fruits that were growing from the trees that you planted years ago. The way to do it is just to go every day to find a quiet place, a nice and comfortable hour for you to go and chat and just talk in the most honest and gentle and sincere way with yourself, with your soul, with the Creator. I think it's the strongest, most powerful tool I, I ever m found and used in my life. A simple conversation with the Creator, just like to be open, to be honest, to say the truth. And to ask from Him to connect us to our true, our real potential. That we won't go all day long broken and said, Oh me, I'm not worth it, I'm nothing, I'm zero, I'm a failure, I'm this, I'm... Th this is all nonsense. This is all voices of the evil inclination that tries to break your spirit instead of you pushing yourself and rising and going. And when Hashem wanted to give the Torah to, to our nation, to Am Israel, so the angels were fighting. They didn't want us, they jealous. They didn't want us to receive the, the holy tablets. So Hashem called Moses and told him, I want you to answer the angels. Moses was scared. He told them, he told Hashem, they can, they can burn me with their breath, like they're so hot, so fiery, so dangerous, like they can kill me. I'm a flesh and bones. So Hashem told him, hold my throne of honor, and I'll assist you. Like attach yourself to me, and I'll and I'll give you the right advice. I'll give you the power to make it to succeed. You need to attach yourself to Hashem to hold his throne of honor. Don't think that you're not holding. If you want to hold, you're holding. When you want to grab the throne of honor and you're just like, I'm holding, say it with your mouth, say, I'm holding the throne of honor. That's it, you're holding the throne of honor. You don't need to see the throne of honor to, to hold it. You just need to believe in it. I am attaching myself to Hashem. How you attach yourself to Hashem? You say, I am attaching myself to Hashem. I'm attaching myself to Hashem. You want to learn Torah? Okay, sit and learn Torah. You don't need those books. No, you just sit and learn Torah. You really want to learn? Open a book, sit and learn. You want to pray? Okay, pray. For what? On what? For things that you need. You can ask for 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 a watermelon. You can ask for for sherry tomatoes. Like you need to ask for your needs. You need to ask for your salvation. If you're going from one grocery store to the next because you're looking for a certain cheese and you can't find it, you, you, you need to talk about it with Hashem. Hashem, like, it's the second store that I'm going, like, I'm wasting hours, like, why do I need to go, like, to another store and another store? Like, can't you help me to find my needs close by with no effort, with no pain, with no sorrow, with no waste? 
and cheap prices and good prices and that I'll have the ability to pay for all my expenses, all my needs. Those are the most beautiful prayers that brings a person to simplicity, to function in a normal, insane, and, and beautiful, gorgeous, inspiring way. We don't need more than that. We just need to live our lives in the light of the Creator, protected under the wings of the Creator. And to, you want that? So tell him, Hashem, protect me, Hashem, help me, Hashem, heal me. Simple prayers will bring you high. I want you guys to know that I'm willing to do more than I'm doing and to help you in more ways all the time, in any possible way. My, um, my WhatsApp number is well known to everyone and everyone are um, always welcome to send me WhatsApp messages. It's uh, I don't mind to tell you the number. I'm not answering phone calls though. Um, if you want to speak over the phone, this is something that needs to like be set a uh, long time ahead because my schedule is uh, kind of spooky, tense. So uh, if you want to message me um, on WhatsApp, so you're more than welcome to do that. The number is 424-353-7797. And you can always send a message on WhatsApp and I would love to respond. I also go through all the comments and the emails and everything so you can always feel comfortable. And if you want me to discuss and to speak about a certain topic, so just write it in the comments below or that you can send an email to info at emuna.com, emuna with an H in the end that we won't forget Hashem. And um, and that's it. If there's anything that I can do for you, yesterday I dedicated a long time to pray for all you guys that wrote their names on the lists and also sent messages. And more than 300 people, oh Hashem, maybe even more than 400 people. And I was very happy to do that. And if there's anything that we can do for you, please don't hesitate and send us a message, an email, a WhatsApp, and we would love to, to help in any possible way. Thank you very much and may Hashem bless us all as one. Amen. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit emuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.